Good morning. Today's gospel reminds us that the most important commandment we have been given as followers of Jesus is to love God and to love others. These two dimensions of love are inseparable. Whenever we love others, especially those who are difficult to love, we are also loving God. And the best way to show our love for God is to love others. This kind of authentic Christian love will always cause us to sacrifice and to suffer, but it is the only way that love will win in our lives. Please uh, remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you for that. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis. Oh, Father Donald, I'm sorry. And the preacher is Father Roberto. I'm used to reading at 7.30, so I got the... Never mind. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. And with your Let's ask the Lord for that compassionate love that carries us over into the farthest places in the world and makes us missionaries of Christ's presence. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Grant this through Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the lands of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you, lend one, uh, if you lend money to one of your poor neighbors uh, among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, my strength. from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Right to you, Lord. May the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My oldest brother, Tony, died in the year 2017 of a heart attack. At that point of his life, he and my sister-in-law had been married for 57 years. Unfortunately, for the last 10 years of their marriage, my sister-in-law suffered from Alzheimer's. And for the first seven years of her disease, my brother tried to take care of her at home as best he could. But after those seven years, he realized that he simply could not give her the care that she needed. So he eventually decided to send her to a care facility. And so for the last three years of his life, my brother visited my sister-in-law in that care facility every day. Even though sometimes because of her Alzheimer's, my sister-in-law would get angry at him for no reason. She would pick on him and just not make him feel very good. But worst of all, sometimes when he visited her, she did not know who he was. It really, really hurt my brother. But he still went to see her every day. My brother let love win in his life. I'm sure that many of us here remember the sad news story of a few years ago about Dylan Roof, a 21-year-old white supremacist who on June 17, 2015, walked into an African-American church in Charleston, South Carolina, and shot and killed nine African Americans as they were praying and reading the Bible. It was a horrible hate crime. Two days later, when he appeared in court for the first time, a number of the relatives of those nine victims also went to the courtroom. 
And there they told Dylan that in spite of the terrible thing he had done, they loved him and forgave him. One of them, the granddaughter of one of the victims, said this. Although my grandfather and the other victims died at the hands of hate, this is proof. Everyone's plea for your soul today here in this courtroom is proof that they lived in love and their legacies will live in love. So hate won't win. That young woman and those relatives of the victims in the courtroom that day let love win in their lives. I truly believe that love is the most powerful force in the world, more powerful than any disease, more powerful than hatred and evil. I truly believe that. My brother's faithfulness and love for his wife, for my sister-in-law, was more powerful than her Alzheimer's. It was not easy for my brother, but love won that battle in his life. Those relatives of the church shooting victims in South Carolina showed that love and forgiveness is more powerful than the hatred and evil that made Dylan Roof shoot their loved ones. I cannot imagine how hard it was for them to go to the courtroom that day and tell that man that they loved and forgave him. But once again, love won that battle in their lives. Jesus knew the power of love. And Jesus knew that every human being is created by love and created to love by God. And that is why Jesus made love the most important commandment for his followers, as he said in today's gospel. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus did not make the most important commandment to go to church or to read the Bible or even to pray. He made the most important commandment for us to love God and to love others because Jesus knew that if we get love right, then everything else is going to fall into place. If we put love first, then we will follow his other commandments, his teachings, and the church's rules and regulations. It'll all be there if we love first. And Jesus also knew that on the contrary, if we don't get love right, if we don't put love first, then we might have the greatest faith and do all sorts of religious things in our life, but they will be worthless without love. In today's gospel, Jesus is telling us that our love has to have two dimensions, a vertical dimension of loving God as well as a horizontal dimension of loving our neighbor. And either of those two dimensions without the other is not authentic or complete Christian love. I would imagine that most of us here get that vertical part pretty well, right? We love God. That's one of the reasons you're here at church. It's the horizontal part that's the tough part, right? It's the horizontal part of loving those difficult people, those jerks, that God has somehow put in our lives and in our world. That's the hard part, right? Or am I right? That's the tough part. Loving those people. My brothers and sisters, let's see. A vertical dimension of love for God and the horizontal dimension of loving others. Let's see, vertical and horizontal. Hmm. What does that call to mind? What image? The cross. Jesus showed perfect love 
on his cross. His cross had a vertical part to it, which reminds us that Jesus intensely loved the Father, that Jesus did everything in his life to bring the Father glory, to accomplish the Father's will in this world. And Jesus' cross also had that horizontal piece to remind us that he did that. He died on the cross. He gave for all human beings. I do not think it was an accident that the instrument of Jesus' death is also a perfect image of the love he had and of the love that you and I are called to have. Our love must mirror the love of Jesus. Therefore, our love must also mirror the cross we too must have a vertical dimension of love for God and a horizontal dimension of love for others because that is the only way love will win, having both of those dimensions in our lives. Now you and I have to understand this, that if we want to love the way Jesus loved, eventually it's going to put us on our own cross. Because loving God, truly loving God and truly loving others will always cause sacrifice and suffering in our lives at some point. Just ask my brother. Just ask the relatives of those victims in Charleston. Just think of your own life. Every time you have truly loved God or loved someone else, at some point you had to pay the price of sacrifice or, and suffering, right? Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. You had to pay that sacrifice because that is the only way love can win. So the question I have for all of us today is, is love winning in your life? My guess is that in many ways it is. Because I think that every one of us here does something for the sake of love, probably more than once a day. Some of you here are loving in a heroic way like my brother by caring for one or more of your loved ones at great sacrifice to yourself. Some of you here are loving heroically by loving and trying to forgive someone who hurt you in the past. But in addition to these heroic forms of love, you and I can do simple things to show our love for God and for others every day of our lives. For example, every time you get yourself out of bed to go to work to provide for your family, that is an act of love. Every meal you cook, every load of laundry you do, every little act of kindness, every noble thought, every word of thanks, when it's done for love, is an act of love. Amen? Amen. It is. And so, my brothers and sisters, that is the kind of love that you and I are called to have. Remember, that every time... You love, you show your love for someone, you are also loving God. And the best way to show your love for God is by loving others. And so my brothers and sisters, if you want to follow Jesus, at some point you have to pay the price of loving the way that he did. Of loving God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And that means you have to be willing to experience the cross of sacrifice and suffering because of that love. Because that is the only way love will win. My brother, my sister, let love win in your life. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Inspired by today's gospel, we now show our love for God by loving and praying for all others. That, like Jesus, we would let love win in our lives by being willing to sacrifice, to forgive, and to suffer for love's sake. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those whose love, sacrifice, and forgiveness have helped us to be better people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we consider our enemies, that God would bless them and help them and help us to let go of any anger, bitterness, hatred, or vengeance in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this election season, our political, religious, and cultural differences would be overcome by God's spirit of compassion and a desire to work together for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anna Wood and family in thanksgiving, who we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you have created us to love you and all your children. May we faithfully live up to the calling and, and accomplish your will in our lives. We ask this to the one who loved us best of all, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Mary, my brothers and my sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal for humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our Holy Father Dominic, our sister Catherine of Siena, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and all the apostles and glorious martyrs and saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm on, in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Jose our Bishop, and the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family wh whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glum, all God, almighty Father, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from all of our fears and our anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's show one another the, another the sign of that cruciform love. together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
and unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what that lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The deadline to sign up for children's faith formation is November 14th, and the deadline to sign up for confirmation is November 15th. So be there or be square. <laughs> Next weekend, we'll have the collection for Peter's Pence. This is the special fund that helps the Pope carry, on out all, carry out all his charitable works throughout the world. Uh, Pope Francis is particularly notable for his work with the poor. And uh, has done tremendous stuff with that money. And it's made a great difference to a lot of very poor people. Envelopes will be available by your, for your donations, which you can put in with the regular collection. Is it okay for Catholics to celebrate Halloween? Yes. Hmm. All souls. Hmm. <laughs> Father Roberto has written an answer to that question in his message in the bulletin today. You also received a homily reflection guide when you came to Mass to, to help you to reflect on today's challenging gospel. We'll have a blessing of animals next Saturday, October 31st, in the adult ed courtyard. No attack bulls, please. <laughs> or lions, full-grown lions, or tigers, or bears. Oh, my. But smaller fry are welcome. Please see the back page of the bulletin for more information about that. It'll be in the adult ed courtyard over across behind the church. We also invite you to bring a framed picture of your deceased loved ones to be placed on a special altar for the Day of the Dead. Please see page two of the bulletin for more information on that. Hispanos in Acción will be sell selling tamales by prepaid order only on November 15th after the morning masses. They will sell them by the half dozen or half dozen only. We will be talking, taking the orders in the parish office. More details in next week's bulletin. Yum. Yum? <laughs> Father Cashin is still at Mission Care Center in Rosemead for, for, for continued physical therapy for another week or two. Please keep him in your prayers. Also, as you leave Mass, you are invited to participate in Operation Christmas Child. Simply take a sheet, shoe box and fill it with an appropriate item to be sent to needy children throughout the world. More information is in the bulletin. So you're going to take home what for, to get all this information? A bulletin. A bulletin. A bulletin. <laughs> and read it. <laughs> Let's pray. It doesn't read itself. The Lord be with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to read the bulletin. Longing for light, we wait in darkness, longing for truth.